Now that you have seen a Nearpod presentation from the teacher perspective, we want to show you that same presentation from a student perspective. So when a student goes to Nearpod, um, they don't need to log in. All they have to do is enter a PIN. And again, that PIN comes from your presentation as a teacher. So it's in the top left-hand corner of the teacher presentation screen. So as a student, I am going to type in that code and click OK. And it should allow me to then join the session that Lindsay started that you saw previously. So you'll notice that I'm in the session. Unlike the teacher presentation mode, students do not have arrows at the right and the left side because students do not control the presentation. I cannot move it. I'm relying on the teacher to guide me through the presentation. So as Lindsay uh, advances my screen, you'll notice that the first thing a student has to do is put in a name. We always encourage first name, last initial, because we think that works well, especially if you have um, some different or multiple students with the same first name. They do not have to enter a student ID, um, so we'll hit submit. This information goes directly to the teacher laptop or the teacher's screen so that the teacher can see who is logged in. I'm a student so it just tells me thank you and that's how I know I have submitted the correct um, information or have it submitted an answer correctly. So this is an information screen that Lindsay took you through and the next screen is going to be another information screen so again she's guiding. And this is the poll question. Now, if you remember um, on Lindsay's presentation, uh, it just had a summary of students and then what their answers were. So uh, what is your favorite way to present a class project? You'll notice over here to the right, I have a scroll down so that I can see all of my op options. And as a student, I select my answer. And then I go to the bottom right and I click Submit. And it tells me, thank you, so I know that my answer has been submitted. Again, this is an information screen. And the next slide, we are actually going to get the opportunity to answer an open-ended question. So the prompt is at the top, describe a time that you had to present a class project. And I could enter my answer here. Okay. And this answer could be um, fairly lengthy. We recently had students uh, practice blog commenting um, in the open-ended question section, and many of the students were creating lengthy seven to eight sentence paragraphs, and it worked well. And I hit submit, and it says thank you, so I know that my answer then was received um, at Lindsay's computer. So this is my info slide on quizzes. And here's what a quiz slide actually looks like um, from a student perspective. I like this because it asks the student if they are ready to take the quiz, and they click go. And then the question and the answers come up. Which of the following should you not do when giving a class presentation? You can scroll down to see all, see all of the answers. You select your answer. I have selected an incorrect answer. I click next and then it says click next to submit your final answer, which I do. Now the student does not see on his or her screen if they got the answer right or wrong. However, the teacher will be able to see if the student got it right or wrong. The next one that we talked about was draw it. This is an informational screen. And then here's the sample. So when students have an opportunity to draw it, you'll notice that the question is here, the prompt, circle what you think is the most important tip. Um, that's a little hard to read because we have uploaded an infographic in this slide. But down here in the bottom left, you'll notice we have pins. So I can go ahead and select a pen length and a pen color if I would like to. And then I'm going to circle what I think is the most important tip. So I think that is asking questions. Now notice you can also erase that. Okay, I can undo and it re erases all of it. So then I would have to go back and do it again if I didn't, didn't like my answer or wanted to change an answer. Um, the student can also insert their own image here. So um, that could be a way to work with this uh, draw it 
uh, question two. And then when I'm finished, I go to the bottom right and I click send. And it says thank you. So again, I know that my information was received and then I'm at the end of my example. So again, uh, Nearpod is a great tool that allows teachers uh, to make a PowerPoint interactive so that students actually become involved in the presentation.